Welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be stepping you through the second part of the Micron Data Logger system. How to download the data from your control unit on the go-kart to the computer and then to do some simple analysis. So let's get to it. Okay, so now that you've gone out to your local track, wherever that is, and you've buzzed more than one session, because we want to compare two sessions, right? And you've got it all saved here in the, your data logger. It's now time to switch it on and make sure the Wi-Fi is connected so that we can transfer the data from here to the computer to do the race analysis. Thanks to everyone that's gone over and made a donation to the Power of Public Patreon page. If you want to check that out, click in the link in the description below. Also to everyone on YouTube that's clicked the subscribe or notifications button. Thanks very much. Now that you are, have some sessions saved in here, you're back in the pits, turn the micron unit on, just like so. Press the exit button. And then we want to go into the menu to make sure the Wi-Fi is switched on. So click across until you get to the Wi-Fi icon and hit enter. And then just make sure it's set to automatic. Once that's done, you can turn it off there obviously, just set it back to auto, exit, exit, and you're now ready to talk to your computer. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is to open Race Studio 3. Now if you haven't downloaded that, you're going to need to download that from the internet. Now that's very simple, just type it into Google, Race Studio 3 free download, up it'll come, click on the box, download it to your computer. Once you've got Race Studio 3 open on the computer, Now's the time that you want to connect the computer to the data logger on your go -kart. So now that you're into the Race Studio 3, drag your cursor up to the Wi-Fi button here in the top right hand corner. Click on that and you'll see here is our data logger. And you want to go over to the connect button, press that. Just wait for that to connect to the unit and then what you can do next is you can go over to this little guy over here and it'll go green once it's connected. You click on it, see it still says no device. Now, what we're gonna wait and see is the device will come up. Now, it just takes a few moments. Sometimes it's quicker than others. Once it's found the device, you're gonna see that this little icon here turns green, and the underneath the heading connected devices, you can see that your micron is there. So just double click on that, and it'll start to download all the test sessions out of your Micron data logger onto the computer. Next thing you're going to see is a screen like this and you want to go over to the download tab. And what you're going to see is all your test sessions and they'll be all highlighted. So what I like to do is click this little icon here for select unselect and then you can just go through the test sessions and select the ones that you want to download. You can also unselect them if you want to. We have different drivers in the cart, so we've got some huge variations in uh, lap times. So I'm going to click these three sessions here, which is three different drivers. We had different weight for different drivers. So we had a 70 kilo driver, a 90 kilo driver, and a 100 kilo driver. So we've all got different weights, so it's, we should be able to see a good variation when we overlay the data in the Race Studio 2. Now that you've selected the sessions that you want to download, Hit the download tab up here on the left and it's going to come up with some information that you can fill out on the screen. We were using a Tony car, it wasn't a Galaxy, but it was a Rotax 125 Senior Max. We might just still. It's only got so many letters. So we just deleted senior and just put S max. And we weren't doing qualifying. We were just doing some generic testing. We weren't at Proserpine, we were at Ipswich. Cart track. And we had Mitchell. And we also had two other drivers, which was the LOC. And we also had Cal. So we're just going to put all their names there because it's three different sessions, just so that we know three different drivers, three different sessions. 
Once the session has downloaded, it'll turn green. Now sometimes there is an uh, error in the download process, and this little bar here will turn black. It's just a matter of retrying the, uh, to download the information to the computer, and uh, once you have done that, it will go green, and that's successful. And then it deletes them out of this uh, little area here, so you don't download them again a second time. So now that you've downloaded all the information to your computer, it's time to go into the analysis mode. Drag the cursor up to the analysis icon here on the top left, if you just hover over it for long enough, it'll tell you what the tab is. Double click on that, and that's going to bring up the data that you just downloaded into the Race Studio 2 program. Now this is where you do all your analysis. If you haven't got that on your computer, go into your search engine and Google free download Race Studio 2 software. And a whole bunch of options will come up. Just click on the uh, first one that comes up from the AIM website and download it to your computer and you're good to go. So now that you've got the three sessions we're gonna look at, you can see here on the screen, we've got, the those are the last three sessions from Wednesday. Uh, we've got a timestamp there, 7.06, 7.38, and then at 8.08 p.m. We're out there doing Wednesday night practice. The first one I'm gonna open up was Cal, and that was the biggest driver for the day. As you can see on the screen, we have GPS speed and RPM. Now, what I want to do is I want to do the classic overlay. Okay, so we want to get our second driver up or get our second session. And just to compare, because, you know, like if you get a better driver in your cart than you, uh, what you can do is you can download his information or get him to drive your cart. And then you can um, overlay the two and just see where that big gain or loss is compared to that better driver. And um, yeah, you can really start to focus in on just one or two corners, which will be the ones where you're making the biggest uh, time losses. So go into your lap manager now. You've got your test database. That's where we just were. Okay, we've already selected one session there for Mitchell, LOC, and Kelp. And now we want to select the second session, which is here with Mitchell Bell driving. Now we're into a page called the Lap Manager. In this page here, we can select all different laps from that exact same session. So this is Mitchell's session, and we can just go along and select a couple of different laps if we want. Now we're not doing that in this particular part of the video. I'll show you how to do that later on. So for now, all we need to do is go back to our measures graph. And then you can see this is the classic overlay. The blue being Mitchell, and the red being Cal's lap. Now, you'll see some differences here under acceleration and maybe some braking, but as a whole, you can see our two drivers from the 250 meter mark all the way to the 850 haven't lost a lot of time because that's your reference line. By coming out of that part of the circuit, we've got a little bit of a time loss, which we're going to expect to see with different weighted drivers. Now to get to this level of analysis, I've got this set up on my computer and it goes there straight away. I'm gonna back step it through so you guys can get your setup this way if you want to. Now a guy showed me this out of Ipswich, his name's Chad Donovan, he's a great guy, he's from Intune Race, so I'm gonna put a link to him below in the description, you can click on that and contact Chad if you need any specialized help with a micro, he was fantastic. Also too, there's some other great tutorials online I'll put links to those in the description below on how to use some of these uh, Micron uh, guys showed me how to use it and this is what I use when I go to the track just to sort of break stuff down for people. So if you go over to here you've got your user profiles. Now there's all different ones here, there's home, uh, test file, GPS, data review, but I use the DES homepage. Now if you click on the X it's going to delete it. So don't do that if you want to keep your data page as you like it. You can save and override it if you want, and you can also switch. So if I want to switch to the home page, I'm going to click here. Okay, and that's the Micron default home page. So you can see the colors have changed there. Otherwise, you can open a new one. Okay, when you open a new one, you might call this uh, YouTube. Oh, I've got to spell right. YouTube 
demo. Okay, and you can click on the screen, new empty user profile, because that's what you guys are going to have. And we just click OK. And you can see it's pretty standard, close to the home one. Okay, so now that we've gone back to a default mode, I'm going to show you the next thing that we use to really make some test compare comparisons between, say, two drives or two sessions. Over here on the right, you can see there's a little icon here, and that's for, to have the um, graphs stacked with each other on top, and you can turn them off, and you can toggle through these different ones, and they overlay them. But I find the um, graphs, show graphs tiled page is the best. This is what Chad showed me as well. And then you want to make sure you've got your tests compare here when you've got two different sessions loaded up. And you can see on the screen there, there's Mitchell session two and Mitchell LAC session one. Now, you can unselect here on the left, lap per color. And then what that does is it just changes the colors so to make it easier for you to recognize on the screen. Another handy feature is the sort channels icon. If you click on that, you can sort the channels by your preference. So we use GPS speed, okay, so we're going to move that to the top. We're going to use RPM, okay, so we're going to move that to the top. We also like to use the GPS lateral acceleration and the GPS long acceleration. And then sometimes, you know, you might have a temperature one. You, you might want to put that up there. Once they're at the top, these are the ones we use the most. Okay, you might want to move that one down because it's not as important. Maybe you want to have RPMs at the top. That's what we normally do. So you can just move them up. And then I like to have the speed right, right below it. Okay, so now that you've done that, you can apply an exit. And it moves the icons over here for the top five ones are the ones that we just selected. And they just toggle on and off now. But because we've made a change, I'm going to go into my user profile. And then I'm going to go to my YouTube demonstration. And I want to save it. So I'm going to click save. And now it's saved my new preferences under the YouTube demonstration tab. So every time I want to go in and go back to this page, I can click on the little arrow here that has the reverse two arrows and it's going to change the profile. So go back to your measures page and turn on the GPS speed, the long and the lateral acceleration. And that's all, it looks like a bunch of squiggly lines. Now if you press the space bar, it gets rid of your measures graph on the side and you can press the space bar and it comes back. You can also click on this little red, say you don't like red, you like uh, green. Then you can select green all right. But to me, the blue and the red looks pretty good. It's easy to differentiate the two sessions. That's what the other guys use, and I've tried different colors, but they're probably the best too. Okay, so now that you've got your computer all set up the way you want to, it's time to break down some analysis. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the second driver, and I'm just going to bring up different laps for the one driver from the one session. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to go up to this little X here, and I'm going to close that session down. So now I've only got the one session open, and we can see that here in our lap manager. Over here in lap manager, the reference lap was our best lap, and that's a 53.4 seconds. So we're going to go over here and get a 53.9 second lap, and double click on it, and it brings it up onto our analysis side. And he's also done a 54.00. So we've got three laps to look at. Now we're going to go into my measures graph. Now it looks a little bit, uh, I don't know, it's just a little bit hard to decipher. So another thing you can do that's easy is to change this color here to gray. And then same for this one. Because remember, this is one driver with three different laps from the one session. So now what you want to try to do is pick a trend. Now we've highlighted three laps for the one driver from the one session. So let's have a look at that on the screen. Up until the 250 meter mark, everything's going pretty good. And then you can see the two lines diverge. The blue line being our reference and the two gray lines are where we've lost some time. So the bulk of our time is lost between 250 and say 550 meters. Now at Ipswich, that particular part of the track is 
quite tight and twisty. So what we're going to try to do is bring up a track map so we can show you on the screen where the driver is losing time against his best lap. If we go over to here, you can go to map and click on new. And it brings up a, a, a map of the, from the GPS. So what you want to do there is to remove all the sectors and then you're going to break it down into three sectors. Now, uh, the first sector, we're going to go over to here and there's no really rhyme or reason. We're just going to break the, the track up into three sort of sectors here. We might bring um, sort of halfway there, divide it again. Now, if you go on to it, if you click onto that sector, you can make it a different color. And that, I'm going to show you that in a minute. But we've got a red sector, a blue sector, then a green sector. We're going to call this um, YouTube Demo. Click on the OK button. Okay, and you can see here we've got a red sector, a blue sector, and then a green sector. So with our three sectors selected, now we can, we've made the track map. All we have to do is click on the map icon and it's going to bring the map up on the screen. If you go over to here, there's a tiny little icon that says show track map. We click on that, shows us the track map and the three sectors that we just made. What you want to do now, or what I like to do, is to move the track map up into a point of the screen where you can leave it active but still see the measures graphs. This is basic Windows operations here. You just hold your button there on the little arrow and you can shrink it down. And you come over to this one, shrink that guy down there, and now you've got your track map. If you just click on it in the middle, Sorry, if you just click on it at the top in the track map section, you can drag it up out of the way. So now that you've done the track map and you can see where you are making the mistakes, hover over that area on the screen. And you can see as you click here on the bottom part, this is the area, the 250 meter to the 550 meters where we're losing our time. You can also see up here on the track map that that is turn number seven, eight, and into turn nine. So we're making a, a, some sort of errors in our driving here, and then it's costing us down the straight. Now that's really common at most circuits. The, the corners that lead on the straight, or the longer straight section, are the most critical, and you really want to focus your attention on those. For this next part of the analysis, I'm going to turn the long and the lateral acceleration off, just so we can see the speed trace and the RPM a little bit better. Now what I want to focus on here is this is the exit of a fast right hand corner and the blue line, our reference line, we can see that the car decelerates, gets to the corner apex and then accelerates in a nice smooth linear line. Whereas on one of our slower laps, the grey lap, if you can see here, if I get the cursor out of the way, the grey lap, he has too much speed, so we've got a three nearly four kilometers an hour variation in GPS speed. On our best lap, we were 56, and on one of our slower laps, we were as much as 60. So we've had a little bit of a slide, I'd say, on the exit of the corner, because the speed comes back up, and then it drops back down again. Whereas on the blue lap, it was very linear. So from the apex all the way down the next straight, we had nice linear acceleration. And our KPH speed, peaks at 92 kilometers an hour, whereas on the slowest lap, it was only at 88. So the speed on the straight, or the terminal speed at the end of the straight, was caused by too high a corner speed on the corner that preceded that straight. So we've gone in fast, had a bit of a lose on the exit, and it's cost our speed at the very end of the next straight. And that's what we see a lot, especially with the newer drivers, is that they go in so hot into the corners, they don't wash the speed off to get the cart to steer properly, they come out of the, the hairpin corner that proceeds to straight, and then they're going down the straight and the classic, ah, oh, the engine doesn't pull, oh, I've got no straight line speed, whereas probably what's happened is we have perfected that corner as well as some of the other drivers, and they're getting a better run onto the straight, so our terminal speed is higher. So that's a classic and a great one to look out for. So the Micron 5 data logger and the Race Studio analysis is super complex and there's heaps of information on there and I've only just touched on like a tiny fraction of it and I'm not a huge pro. I, I use this to my advantage 
with the skills that I've got. But hey, if you've got some questions and there's stuff that you want me to cover, please feel free, put it in the comments section below and I'll try my best to answer it for you in next week's video. So if you've made it this far through the video, thank you very much for following along. You may also like some of our other videos, so hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications, smash that like button, follow us on Instagram and Facebook if that's your thing, at Power Republic, or go to our website, www.powerrepublic.com.au and grab yourself a t-shirt or a brand new Micron 5 data logger. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.